Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Hope you all having a very great and a very blessed Friday out there today. Yay! <laughs> it's Friday. That's a good thing. God bless every single one of you. I have a lot of new information to show you guys, plus the historic heat wave that will be still hitting the West Coast. Now, if you've never been here before, hello. <laughs> my name is Mark. I do upload usually every single day. I took off yesterday because I love my family. I love being around them. I just couldn't resist. Plus, the tropics is moving a little slow. I knew I can afford a day off. But at the same time, make sure you subscribe because I am all year around. Now, the two videos I have for you today, the one on the very top is GFS. This is 500 millibar vorticity on both of them. And you can see how upper level low comes over Florida and it squeezes and elongates this group of thunderstorms into the Gulf of Mexico. And it does ride up Texas and towards Louisiana. And the one right above my head is from the Euro. It's showing that it still will make it to the Bay of Campeche, just like GFS is showing. But it's showing that a big high pressure is going to move in above Texas, and it's just going to bring it west. It can't go east because the Euro is also showing that it will be a upper level low moving over Florida, moving to the west, which will be causing a lot of shear. So east of Gulf of Mexico, there's no way it can do anything. Now, upper level lows normally last about three to ten days. So whether that's going to be there in a couple of days when this energy makes it to the Western Caribbean is still up in the air and questionable. Although I am showing in some ensembles that it is still trending, that it's going to be intensified as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. So we still need to keep our heads up and keep our eyes open. But as of right now, things are weakening. Now this right here is a good look at our Invest 95L that's out in the MDR, which means I know a lot of people ask, it is your main development region where we get our hurricanes at the time of year. And this is very early to be getting a big, healthy uh, wave like this this time of year. It's too early for this. And it is showing. We have a big high pressure moving in. Plus we have a lot of dry air. We have dust that is moving in a big plume of it. And the shear is messing this storm all up. Now this is your Invest 95L intensity track. And it does show that it will make a southern turn as it gets into the edge of the Caribbean by the leeward and the windward islands. That's still about four days away. So we still have to wait. As a matter of fact, the GFS model shows that it actually will make a north to a northwest turn where the euro was showing that it was going towards Puerto Rico. Don't worry, Puerto Rico and the Caribbeans. I do have y'all rainfall amounts. And go towards the Bahamas and get pulled away by the high pressure. And that is still trending. And the intensity guidance for this wave shows that it will strengthen a little bit. But it's going to be on a decline after that. With the dry air, with all the shear, it really don't have anything to do within the next four days for sure. And the update on this Disturbance 1, which is our Invest 95L, is now going down to even more. It's going down to 20%. It's really going into a very unfavorable environment at this point. And the disturbance in the East Pack has actually formed this morning. It is now Tropical Storm Enrique, and it is predicted to be a hurricane by 1 a.m. on Sunday and move back down to a Tropical Storm on Tuesday. Affecting no one. You might get some winds on the edge of lower Mexico, but it is moving away. And the winds that you would feel would be tropical storm winds, if anything, in a very low percentage of it. You're up around 5%, 10%. So it'd be very low winds. The hurricane winds is going to be way out into the ocean. Now, as we look at the Euro and see what's going on for the possible cyclone locations for the next 10 days, you do see a lot of weakening. There's a little strengthening right there, but then it weakens greatly. There's a lot of dry air, a lot of wind shear going on in the Caribbean. Then when it gets past the Caribbean, you can see a lot of weakening on the west of Bay of Campeche. But there's also a chance for a intensification going over Texas and then across central U.S. to the Ohio Valley. Because according to the Euro, all this is moving even further west because you have a high pressure circling here. You have a low upper level low right here that's putting a lot of shear on the eastern side of the Gulf. This will suck this counterclockwise even more west and it brings the energy straight up Texas really on the edge. And that's been showing for a while. And that next wave, the, the powerful wave now that's really going down, I'm showing it still, according to the Euro, can pop up right over to Yucatan and intensify as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is within 10 days. Here's a look at the track guidance of what is possible for that wave as it comes along. And you see it will intensify a little bit, but it will weaken down greatly. Also, you can see the chances in the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico that we can get intensification somewhere around southeast Texas. Plus, this could make a curve 
at the very last end because if the upper level low moves away, the shear moves away if it takes long enough. And it actually can make it over Cuba and intensify and still get into somewhere around the Panhandle of Florida. I've been showing that for a while. But it's this system here, this strong wave is still up in the air as far as what it's going to do. It all depends on what these upper level lows are going to do. Now this right here, this is your current velocity. This tells you where all the flow is going to go in the waters as any of these systems move through. And it don't matter what day it is, what time it is, you can see the flow stays the same. But you can see that when it makes it down here by Central America, there's a rotation that's going counterclockwise. So it will spin it back over Central America and come up to the Western Caribbean. That's a fact. Uh, going over to Yucatan at that point, following the flow, that's a fact as well. Now, when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, that's where things change. Because you also have a flow here that brings it up across the center of Gulf of Mexico, and that's why we can get them into the southeast still. And you can see it when I move it, you can see the rotation of that space. If something gets there, it will spin around. At the same time, we have a lot of shear that's gonna be in that area. We have some dry air that's gonna move in with this dust, and we have a big high pressure that's gonna squeeze on in. So that's getting more and more rare. This is getting more like this is going to be a west of the Gulf of Mexico situation. And when you look through your possible ensemble cyclones, as far as the GFS goes, you can see that right around six to seven days, we do get weak systems that could come into our Gulf of Mexico. But it shows it also could start intensifying and get towards Texas at that point. And this is right around July 3rd. If it does make that curve, uh, towards the southeast like it showed the other day it will be a very weak system and as you go forward you can see the possibilities for texas for this surface low pressure this group of thunderstorms as it comes in there's many possibilities that showing that it could go sometime between july 1st and july 5th it could be a system that could intensify into the gulf of mexico regardless of what we see now that upper level low only lives about three to 10 days. So whether it's in the beginning or the end of the cycle determines whether it's gonna be there to cause this shear to push things to the west. It even shows it could be a later one, which is one of the later waves that's coming off now that it could intensify and get into our Gulf. And this is by the 8th of July now, and it could still head the same way because that's the way that this flow is looking. There's gonna be a lot of shear along here because of this upper level low moving west. And at the same time, there's going to be a high pressure behind it that's going to squeeze in. It's kind of going to block things. And the euro is showing that there's going to be a high pressure over here that's going to take these west. But the GFS shows that that high pressure will not be there. It'll be further to the west, and it will allow this energy to come in. And when you check to see what the possibilities for a tropical storm, according to the euro, you can see the gray area here where all the energy tries to move in with these next wave that comes in. We have nothing in the Gulf. So if it does become anything, it, it would be weak. But you see, as it gets in the Caribbean, all the chances of tropical storm just slowly diminish because it gets hit by that dry air and that shear so much, it makes it right below Puerto Rico is the furthest. Maybe Dominican Republican, but that's about it. Now, as far as Jamaica, I got your rainfall rates. This is pretty much going to bring probably some much needed rainfall. I'm not showing it's going to be anything crazy. Also, Bahamas and, and Puerto Rico, I got y'all's as well. And when you look for the tropical depression to see for something weaker, you can see the energy going across the Central America into the Western Caribbean four, five days out. And then it starts moving a Western turn towards Texas and maybe more towards Mexico than Texas getting its impact. So you got to remember that. But it could ride up Texas with a little something weak. There is something weak that could curve out towards the Bahamas. That's that other wave. But pretty much everything is getting weakened. So let's look at the perturbed members and see what the possible runs could be, guys. And you can see right here on 7 that it actually could get into our Bay of Campeche and it could go towards Texas. Uh, somewhat a weak storm, but it could cause a lot of rainfall, a lot of problems. And over here on number 6 shows that it would be around July 4th instead of July 2nd and just a little bit later. And it's still going to go towards Texas. And that one's a little bit stronger, bringing a little bit more rainfall. And if you look right here on 22, we actually still have hope for this tropical wave that could make it through all that shear, through the dry air, get through the Caribbean, and still come out into the Gulf of Mexico. And so far, having a curve towards Corpus Christi, somewhere in that area. And if you look right here on 7, it shows that actually by July 1st, 
that it could start to form in the Bay of Campeche, but it could still go towards southern Texas. And if you look right here on 29, it'll show that it will make it. It will be very weak, but it's still going to strengthen up and go towards southern Texas. And here's a closer look at 6, so you can see how much of Texas it actually covers, because it shows that it can go towards uh, southeast Texas, and there'll be a lot of rainfall with that one. Look how much rain is coming with that storm. So it could be some heavier rainfall if that would play up. But I'm still showing right here on 27 that there could be a still upper level low could form and move in quick for the panhandle of Florida. It will be a weak system, but it's still possible. And if you look right here on 22, our strong tropical wave, it could still make it sometime around July 6th, July 7th, and intensify and go towards Texas. So that's still a possibility also. And if you look right here on 25, it shows that actually on the 30th, when it gets into the Western Caribbean, it will go over to Yucatan, it will get its strength back and move back into Southern Texas once again. So it is trending whether it's going to be weak or strong. Southern Texas is like you're getting at least some rainfall, some thunderstorms coming your way for sure. Whether it's going to be rotating into the storm, that's still questionable. And when you look at a euro and see what the possible millibars would be on that system if it was to happen, they show more than likely it would be a 1002 hidden somewhere around Corpus Christi, but it will intensify as it goes across Texas down to a 995 that's somewhere north northeast of Houston and then go across to Arkansas. And they got another one that shows that it could be a 1,000 millibar low pressure because going through Mexico and come up through Texas. And then when it hits Texas, it still could intensify and go all the way down to 994, carry over northern Louisiana to 992, 988, and just strengthen right over northern Louisiana. And it's showing it's possible instead of it being a 992 right here, it could be a 996 right here off the coast of Texas. Now, you do have a lot of severe weather for today. Uh, the marginal is in the green. The slight risk is in the yellow. You also have a chance for tornadoes all the way from northern Texas all the way to Michigan. So this is a good chance for a 2% chance, but it is a long chance. I'm showing you have storms today and tomorrow. I'll show you at the end of the video what that looks like. But you will be having these storms. It will be bringing a lot of rainfall in both models, GFS and Euro shows this heavy rainfall so you need to watch out for flooding guys plus the wind threat will be in the same areas as well as the hail now let's talk about this historic heat wave that's going to come come across real quick across the west coast everybody else is going to be in some 90s as well sooner or later but this is sunday on the 27th and you can see the temperatures that you have all along the west coast even northwest mexico is at 104 so it is very hot temperatures 116 in northern california on monday this is going to grow even worse you look at all the gray along the west coast and we're talking 114 degrees 116 this is going to be very hot and i believe that the hottest has been in the northwest is somewhere around 98 degrees so this is going to be a record-breaking temperature for y'all for sure by Wednesday, you're still going to have 113-something uh, degrees. I'm still moving across the West Coast. Still 114 in Washington. This is still going to be very, very hot. It's going to go down some for Oregon at that point, but it will be southern Idaho. It will be Washington. Thursday is still going to be there. 114, 113 for California. 110 for Washington. And it's still in the 90s for Oregon. 108. For western idaho there's still going to be these very hot temperatures all week and friday it is going to stay the same 100 to 109 degrees 110 along the west coast now you got 104 in southern oregon and you still got 108 to 110 degrees in washington so this is going to be very hot for, especially for washington please get ready get some water get prepared you're going to need some shade guys this is going to be really bad and 106 in southern Idaho. So this is going to be a very, not only historic, but it's going to be record-breaking heat that's coming in. You're not going to be used to this. And it keeps continuing, guys. Saturday, going a week now. 110 degrees still in Washington. 100 and something degrees all along the west and the southwest. Plus 105 still in southern Idaho. So this heat is going to stick around for at least Oh, another week and your rainfall amounts within the next five days you do see right here this is according to the gfs as this storm could still move into the gulf of mexico it will be elongated but 
it still will cause problems at this point. It'll be some winds, it'll be some flooding, and it will be a lot of thunderstorms going on if that still plays out. Plus, if you look from Texas all the way to Michigan, you have very heavy rainfall going on. And this is trending in both models. This is the Euro showing the same thing. You have very heavy rainfall all the way from Michigan all the way to Texas. And the rainfall amount still for Northwest uh, Gulf of Mexico. This is within the next five days. The rainfall is a little bit less. Uh, the Euro shows it just actually gets spread out more the gfs shows you just gets elongated but it stays somewhat together so there's no matter what there's going to be rain coming for st charles all the way to houston now when you look at the euro and see what the rain accumulation is within the next five days you could get anywhere from an inch and a half all the way to almost two inches anywhere from houston all the way to morgan city even homa can get in on it but from five to ten days it could be even heavier that means the next five days after that, it could be over two inches more for Lake Charles, uh, Intracoastal City, Morgan City, Homa. All y'all can see anywhere from three to five inches, I'll show you, uh, rainfall within the next 10 days. With two to three inches of it coming the second part of that five to 10 days. Now the GFS is showing that it actually will stay together a little bit better into the Gulf of Mexico and it will bring more rainfall and more thunderstorms. And it has it all the way within five days. Houston with two inches. Beaumont, Texas, five inches. Looks like you're the spot. You and Lake Charles, four inches. So it could show that this is a very hot spot for some more rainfall that is coming according to both models. But from five to ten days, then you really see what can happen if this storm still hits the Gulf of Mexico. Now you're looking at 15 inches of rainfall for Lake Charles within ten days. Uh, Cameron, Beaumont, Texas. 14 inches of rainfall within 10 days. And it can go all the way up to Houston with 5 inches, Beach City with almost 10. This could be a lot of rainfall. It's coming no matter what. Euro is showing it's a little bit lighter. But GFS shows that it could be pretty bad, even catastrophic for this area. Because you already had a bunch of rainfall already. And now you got a whole bunch more that could be coming. Now, Jamaica, you will have these group of thunderstorms moving over y'all through the Caribbean. And remember, the dust will be within it. And dust is heavier than air. So it will be heavy, probably bigger uh, raindrops that you will be getting. But it does show that within five days, you get about a half inch, maybe a spot or two that might get an inch of rainfall. But from five to ten days, actually the east side of Jamaica could get anywhere from three to four inches of rainfall uh, from the five to ten days out. And GFS is pretty much showing the same thing from 5 to 10 days out. Uh, but from 1 to 5 days, it shows you actually could get an uh, inch to a little over an inch all spread out across the island of rainfall. But 5 to 10 days out is showing that eastern side of Jamaica will see the heaviest part uh, of the rainfall, up to 3 inches and maybe 4. So it is showing the same thing. Now Puerto Rico, I'm showing a very light amount of rainfall, anywhere from half an inch to 3 quarters of an inch within the whole island. Uh, for the next five days and, when, and in 10 days the most of it will be on the eastern side of puerto rico as this wave passes by you could get an inch or two on the eastern side of puerto rico according to the euro and the gfs shows the same thing actually it shows it could be a little bit more inland with the heavier rainfall but it does confirm you will be seeing a couple inches of rain within the next 10 days now according to the euro bahamas you'll see about a half an inch of rainfall within the next five days but after, as these waves move in from 5 to 10 days, you could get a little bit heavier on the northern Bahamas, mostly around Freeport and Alicetown with a little over 3 inches and Foxtown. Uh, but it'd be a little bit lighter as you go more southern. But it looks like everybody's going to get a couple inches of rainfall definitely within the next 10 days. And the GFS actually shows the same thing, but it's a little bit heavier for northern Bahamas. It's a little over 3 inches and possible 4 inches for Alicetown. We actually have an upper level low that's over Florida and it's going to be pulling west. So when it does that, it's going to pull a lot of these storms off the ocean. And it's going to pull them over Florida. They're going to be seeing some rainfall as well because of that. Now, when you look at your relative humidity according to the GFS, you can see our group of thunderstorms or precipitation right here. You can see the dry air, the dust moving behind it. You also got a little bit in front of it. Now, that after we move forward a little bit and go towards five days and six days out, you do see it does pick up a surface low pressure. It's very weak, but at this point is where it moves across into the Gulf of Mexico. And pretty much all the models is showing this movement. 
as far as where it's going to be and who it's going to affect, we still got to wait and see what's going on with this upper level low. Because up, up level low we have now is going to push everything to the west. And when it gets to the west, it will be weak because the whole time it will be getting sheared as it moves to the west. And it will bring a lot of, a lot of thunderstorms. It will bring a lot of rainfall towards Texas as this comes in. So you got to watch out for that. Plus, behind that uh, is actually a big plume of dry air, a big plume of dust that is moving around. And the high pressure will circle it around, carry it well into the Gulf of Mexico. And I actually show that this will actually protect the Gulf of Mexico for, for a while. And this is all the way until July 8th. So I think from the 3rd to the 8th, this high pressure will actually continue to squeeze in. If anybody gets anything, it will be Texas and western Louisiana. But as this moves over, you can see that our next group of thunderstorms from the next wave does make it towards the Western Caribbean. It does stay together in between these two pockets of dry air. So it actually has a chance. I don't see upper level lows causing any speed shear. So this actually could do something. It's just too far away. This is right around June 30th. Uh, this is 100, This is five days away. The upper level low will create a surface low pressure over the Western Caribbean, but it is getting a lot of shear. So it has no choice but to continue and move west. And you can see the upper level low that's all forming over here, and that will create some shear as well. Then you can see it in the Gulf of Mexico in the Bay of Campeche. It's very disorganized. It's very weak. At the same time, you have all this shear blocking any north movement so it will definitely be having a lot of problems if it does anything but then you see that it moves over northern mexico but once it moves over northern mexico the shear starts going away a little bit and this is where this energy could take a northern push and this is by july 2nd still guys as it goes northern over texas the shear comes back up it has its last chance to try and do something but it looks like the shear will swallow it up so still southern Texas is still vulnerable to the system. And you can see also our next tropical wave. It is going to be a surface low pressure uh, by 7 p.m. later on. But you can see all this dry dust that is within this storm. It really don't have anything it could do with this dry dust. There's nothing but dry air and it kills any thunderstorms uh, from growing. That's why it went down to 20%. It's just all in that system as it moves it's just full of dust here's a closer look for you this is on july 2nd the thunderstorms and a group of precipitation moves into the gulf for louisiana and texas the third it starts grouping up into some thunderstorms tries to form something by the fourth it's still sitting there still trying to do something and the run that i saw yesterday is that it actually forms up at the last minute and becomes a 1004 uh, storm so we got to keep our eye up on this now I'm gonna show you what the storms are doing real quick after this I just want to get this out to you guys and warn all, all of you especially the parents you got to watch out for your kids man because now we're finding out that they're actually coming for our kids this is a little side note I just need to help and warn as many people as possible now you all probably know about the, the Filipino president that said about a year ago that he will shoot dead whoever uh, does not go and do the lockdown for the coronavirus. I will put a link to all these videos in the description so you can see it yourself. Plus, just the other day, how he mentioned that whoever does not get the vaccine, he will arrest. And whoever fights him while he gets arrested, and even still when he gets arrested, that he will inject him with something that goes into pigs. So this is very vile, what he's doing over there. And the thanks to Mike444, this is what y'all need to see. I'll put this link in the description also so you can click on it and watch it. It is a document from Dr. Signatures stating what they want to do to everybody. And this is going to be a permanent lockdown that's going to happen in the UK and going to start in about three weeks. Not only the lockdown, but it says here to anybody that openly and freely states that they will not be taking a coronavirus shot or their family their family will be removed from them and they will be removed from their home, whether they own it or not. And that's going about to happen in the UK. And that is horrible. And who's to say that, it, that the U.S. is not going to try and imitate this? Now, anything can change within two to three days from now after that storm gets through the Caribbean and all the troposphere, all the flow of energies get flowing around. We can see what's going on with that upper level low. 
That is making a big difference. That's bringing all the shear and it is doing a lot of blocking. So we got to see what's going on with that because they only normally live about three to ten days. Now you will see that we do have upper level O now and it will be moving west and it will be dragging all this moisture off the ocean and it will be going over Florida. That's why you get in storms. But at the same time, you can see all these storms that's going to brew up all the way from Texas to the Ohio Valley and you got some in the Midwest too. But this is where that big long line of flooding was. So I'm going to play this for you. This is 60 hours, next two and a half days. So you can see exactly what is going on uh, with these storms. It's going to be a lot of rainfall, so please watch out for that and some flash flooding. At the same time, thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Hope you have a very, very blessed day today. Please share this video. Alert people that we do have a lot of flooding that is coming uh, multiple places. <laughs> and what the update uh, is, of course. Now, I want to praise God with you all every morning. God bless you all today. Hope you have a very blessed day. And I'm going to speak of Psalm 93 today. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yes, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house. O Lord, forever. Amen. Hope you have a great Friday out there today. Be very safe if you're in these storms. Watch out for that, please. Good Shabbos to all of you that is taking your Sabbath. I will see you again on Sunday. Hopefully this is still showing weak by then still. All glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Best one to have in charge right there. Have a great day.